Welcome to the Total Film okay. Podcast. <laughs> There's numerous sort of takeaways from this film. I took something completely different from my uh, colleagues in the office. Yeah. What do you think the main themes are? What do you take away from it? I think it's about love. I think it's a love story and I think it's about the, the courage to love. That's what it's about. It's about uh, letting, for me, it's about letting love into your life, even if you think the, the, that safety is the right place for you to be. Sometimes you've got to take the, the, the risk to, to love. Yeah, I, I second that. I think it's a love story. And that's what drew me to wanting to do it in the first place. I think it's one that spans both a, rom- a romantic context and a familial context as well. This film is so beautiful, and you've obviously played real people or people who are based on real people in the past. Mm. But what's it like to play somebody that is so closely based on the writer director's mum? Well, I didn't wasn't aware that she was, um, and he never really articulated that to me in a way. We both obviously spoke about as you do. I think when you get to a certain age, everybody's sort of favourite topic of conversation, weirdly, is their relationship with their parents um, or their family. And so we spoke about our parents and our dynamic and relationship with our parents in depth, as we all did, like all of us, Um, because it's fascinating, um, endlessly fascinating. And uh, I was very clear that I wasn't playing Andrew's mum at all, really. Um, But it was more that I was playing a woman of a certain generation with a certain set of ideals from a certain background and a certain set of morals. And therefore, that was also familiar to me um, um, in my background. So, yeah, I suppose she became an amalgamation of lots of different women that I know and also just a kind of a generational shift that was sort of happening. And um, Yes. You obviously filmed this in the house that was Andrew's childhood home. Yes. What was that experience like? Um, and also the fact that he'd written it very sort of autobiographically. Yeah, it was it was a it was an extraordinary experience actually because almost like playing a real life person when you play a real life person you feel a sort of sense of responsibility. And I suppose it's just to say it was just very tangible that you go this is when he was talking about this stuff this is what he was literally imagining. He says, you know, of course when I was writing it I was imagining my childhood home. And so why not just knock on the door and see if we could film there. And so uh it just was there right in, right in front of our eyes, but he he um he allowed us to sort of take ownership of the house a little bit as well. So he wasn't just going, this is mine, because it obviously had to be my, my I had to incorporate it as in, into my imagination as my home. Um, but uh, yeah, it's sort of just really authentic. And um, it's not too dissimilar from the house that I kind of grew up in. And um, um, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an incredible experience. And it made it literally more intimate, not just emotionally, but because it was just a tiny, it wasn't a big studio where you have space for all the cameras. Um, so the whole experience um, just felt really uh, intimate. Yeah. Speaking of intimacy, how did you create that bond between the two of you? That it's so romantic. I mean, it's like mm. a love story for the ages. Yeah. What did you do to sort of tap into that? I don't think we actively did like it, we didn't like there wasn't like exor- exercises or any like it, it, yeah, it was, exactly. yeah because <laughs> I don't think I don't or I'm yet to be convinced that that's a way of n- navigating that I yeah. think we both trusted each other innately and I think I think it, it helped a lot for me anyway that I had a huge admiration for Andrew before even going in um, but I think it, it sounds kind of like um, but we just kind of went about our jobs like it's it's work it's like one portion of the story we knew is going to have to be about developing this relationship or, or making it believable like my dad always says it's like the key thing about acting is just making sure the audience believes you. yeah exactly. and it's, it's simply put but it's actually i think sometimes can be a hard thing to put in practice but it's uh we're kind of just doing our jobs a little yeah. bit yeah if you had the opportunity to do that and go back to your sort of childhood now oh and your house what's the first thing you'd do Oh, my God. I really wouldn't want to, you know. I have absolutely no interest. Um, I think it's so funny when people say, God, to be a child again, and I'm just like, oh, no. Um, I think, you know, I I think it's such a confusing time, and I think if you're lucky enough to be led in a way and protected and loved, and and, um, then that's so, so wonderful. And, you know, you just hope that you can... um, provide a childhood for your child in a way that is free of care and um, things like that. But I don't really have any interest in going back. Okay. You wouldn't go through your Cindy's cupboard or go no, find They're you. still there. My mum has kept them all. <laughs> yeah. So I see them re- on a regular basis, those Cindy's. That's good to know. Without their hair. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of their legs. The now. overplayed ones. ones yeah, been... very heavily played with. Yeah. Um, tell me about sort of 
becoming the parent to Andrew Scott. Obviously, he's a grown-up man, but there's these lovely scenes that feel, when you watch them as an audience, completely true and natural, you know, him yeah. jumping into bed and things mm. with you. Um, how did you sort of position that in your mind when you were trying to sort of create that dynamic? Yeah, I mean, I think acting a lot of the time is about, you know, a lot of things, you know, people do whole films against a green screen, you know, I mean, when there's nothing there. So, so much of it is an imaginative process where you have to convince yourself to be in, like, some suspended reality or or believe something's happening that's not happening. Um, and uh, to be fair, though, I think Andrew basically did all the work. It, you know, he did so much with his physicality and the way he was behaving around us and that made it so easy for us. Um, and um, of Jamie and myself are both parents, and so I think there was a shorthand there for us, which was which was lucky. Um, but I love him. He He is a truly amazing person, and... To be his parent was a very prideful thing. Like I felt very proud of the man that he was. Yeah. It also feels like we wanted you two to work together. Does it feel like that, that you've been circling each other and this I, was the I think that's what helps really with the yeah. chemistry. It's yeah. like, because if you have an audience who, who wants two people to work together, you're yeah. kind of... That builds it's, chemistry. That builds chemistry because there's an anticipation for it, which I think helps. Yeah, I think sometimes chemistry is built in the audience be, and, and by the scenario that you're in. There's so many different things that, or uh, maybe a, an interest in seeing two different energies, you know, yeah. act together. And I think that's there as well. So that, that there's an anticipation there as well as our enjoyment of acting together yeah. and our um, uh, desire to work together. And then you have the character situation. And then you have the beautiful script. So yeah. that's what builds this thing that people go, oh, God, I recognize this. And this is making me feel you know, uh, feel, the, feel the chemistry. Yeah. Um, I can't ask you anything about Gladiator 2, so can you ask him about it? <laughs> I, ask him. I know all oh, the he has, He's got all the goss. <laughs> um, he's got all the goss. But we're very excited about yeah, that. But this is beautiful, and um, thank you so much for such lovely performances. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Cheers. Thank you.